Hello guys, you are welcome. Well, you are welcome back again to my channel. If you are new here, you are most welcome. We are continuing our discussion of forces and this time around we are considering Hooke's law. Now imagine stretching a rubber band. What normally happens after the force is released is that the rubber band returns to its original state or shape. So for a rubber band, you're able to stretch and release it for it to return to its original shape. And such a material is said to be elastic. So materials that spring back to the original shape after they are released from bending are referred to as elastic. Uh, those that assume a new shape when they are bent are referred to as plastic. And an example of the elastic material is what I gave about the rubber band. We can also think about a spring as depicted in the image. We'll come to it shortly. The property of materials to stretch or bend when the force is applied to them and to return back to the original position when the force is released is referred to as elasticity. The extent to which a material stretches or bends will depend on the size of the force or the load that is applied to it. And we see a depiction of it in the image. In a diagram, we see an unstretched spring. There is no force applied to it. In the next, a two Newton force is applied to the load, which causes the spring to stretch by a margin, which we denoted by an X. So X is the difference between the unstretched and in the stretched length of the spring. So when a two Newton load is applied to it, it stretches by a length of X. What happens when the load is doubled? By doubling the load, we see that the, the spring stretches twice as much as it did for the first one. So our extension here is denoted by two X. The margin or the amount by which the spring stretches when a force is applied to it is referred to as extension. Extension is the difference between the stretch and the unstretched length. So the force applied is referred to as the load. And the extent to which the spring will stretch depends on the size or the magnitude of the load or the force applied. By doubling the load, we see that extension also doubles. So this is typically how you have elastic material behaving, just as we have for this spring depicted in the diagram. Now, this behavior of elastic materials can usually be represented by using a graph. So let's take some time to look at the graph of the relationship between force and extension. See what meaning we can put into it. Then we will return to this diagram. In this diagram, we see a graph of force against extension. A force here is a load that is applied. Force is measured in newtons. We have extension measured in millimeters. Extension is basically length, so it can be measured in any unit of length, being it millimeter, centimeter, or meter. Now, in our graph, we see force depicted on the vertical axis and extension depicted on the horizontal axis. That's typically how it is done, but in some instances, you can have extension on the vertical axis and force on the horizontal axis. Force is measured in newtons, extension is measured in millimeters. A careful look at the graph shows that we have a straight line passing through the origin up to a point here on the graph. Beyond this point, we see the graph is no longer straight, it bends or curves. The straight line passing through the origin shows that there is a direct relation between force and extension. Up to the limit of proportionality, extension is proportional to the load. Doubling the load or the force would also double the extension. But you can see that there is another point here beyond the limit of proportionality and that is referred to as the elastic limit. Beyond the limit of proportionality, force and extension are not proportional. 
but the material is still elastic. It shows elastic properties, that is, it still retains to its original shape, but with little deformation. After the elastic limit, it no longer shows elastic behavior because it gets completely deformed. So beyond this point, the material loses its elasticity. It is important to understand how to interpret this graph. At what point do we have um, a direct relation between force and extension? Beyond what point does it lose its elasticity? Uh, what does elastic limit stand for? So please take note of those points. This behavior of elastic materials is actually coined into a law referred to as Hooke's law. What does Hooke's law say? Hooke's law states that the extension of a spring or elastic material is directly proportional to the force applied, provided the limit of proportionality is not exceeded. And so when we return back to our graph with this law in mind, up to this limit of proportionality, Hooke's law is obeyed, where we have the straight line, where it shows that there is a direct relation between force and extension, Hooke's law is being applied. But beyond this limit of proportionality, Hooke's law is not applied because there is no direct relation between force and extension. And that is why the law states that provided the limit of proportionality is not exceeded. If we continue to add more load to an object, it gets to a point where the rate at which it stretches within commensurate with the force. It is going to be deformed. It is going to lose its elasticity. And so extension is not going to be proportional to the force that is applied. So from the law, force is proportional to extension as long as the limit of proportionality is not exceeded. If we are to do away with the proportionality sign here, we are going to introduce a constant. The constant we introduce here is a k, and that gives us f is equal to kx. K is referred to as a spring constant. So Hooke's law mathematically is represented by F is equal to Kx. Spring constant is defined as the force needed to cause unit extension. From this equation, F is equal to Kx, we can see F on the graph. We see F on the vertical axis. We see extension on the horizontal axis. And that would mean that k is going to be the gradient of this graph. The vertical change over the horizontal change is going to give us a spring constant k, k to be equal to f over x. From this, therefore, what will be the unit for the spring constant? It is not going to be a dimensionless constant. It is rather going to have a unit of Newton per meter. So in your practical exam or in your alternative to practicals, you can have a spring with various loads or forces applied to it. Then from that, you can have a ruler, which will be used to measure the extensions that will be produced when a particular load is applied to the spring. By measuring the extension, you record it against the forces that are being applied. Then a graph will be plotted to show whether Hooke's law is obeyed or Hooke's law is not obeyed. So please take note of this. There's something very practical that you would have to keep in mind when it comes to questions on Hooke's law. Later, there's going to be a full video on questions on Hooke's law to help you get a firm grip on the concept. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, or leave a comment in the section below. See you in the next tutorial.